We are now on the edge of such a revolution. We're on the edge of an AI revolution. Hello. My name is Mati. I've been in marketing for 25 years. I worked at great brands like Lego, Disney, Nestle. I've been the CMO of SodaStream and now Fiverr. And I can tell you one thing for sure. This is the most exciting time of my career. I'll speak a, a bit about that. I'll also talk about a couple of hot jobs. I'll talk about two revolutions, maybe three. And then, in the end, we'll wrap up with a tiger after we speak about AI, OK? So this is me at 15. Yeah, I had better hair than today. Not sure about the fashion style. But anyway, back then, I didn't think I'll be a CMO. I actually didn't dream I'll be in marketing. I had a completely different dream job in mind. It's probably a bit nostalgic, but do you remember these record shops? These record shops, full with vinyl records and CDs, where all the music lovers gathered. I love them. I used to go to my favorite go-to shop, and I thought the people that, that worked there were the coolest people ever. I don't know if it's because of their tattoos or what, but I wanted to be one of them. Well, we all know what happened to them, to these places. But today, you know, the young, cool people could be other things, like, for example, Tom, a social media manager, something that didn't exist when I was growing up at the 80s. If you go back a bit more to the 50s, to the 60s, when my parents were growing up, another hard job was a punch card operator. There were tens of thousands of people that would spend the full shift punching cards and entering data into big mainframe computers. Obviously, this doesn't exist anymore. But people nowadays, people with those capabilities, could be website builders like Lisa, for example. And last example, if you go even back further to the 30s, for several decades, there, was, there were these people that would connect the telephone. Every single phone call was connected. You know, it's unbelievable to think about it today. And these jobs were considered jobs that required capabilities, people that were good in tech, right, whatever they called tech back then, and people that could handle stressful situations. Now today, people that are good in tech and can handle stressful situations could be digital managers, uh, digital project managers like Tayoun, for example. So if you take, you, know, you take a step back and you think about the big revolutions, the pivotal moments that happened through history, one obviously big revolution is the Industrial Revolution. Think about it. Steam engines and engines coming and taking a lot of the labor, uh, the human labor force. Well, we know the Industrial Revolution also fueled the economy dramatically and increased consumption. And when you think about it, in the 90s, in the dot-com revolution, almost overnight, many, many roles and almost sectors and industry were created, like social media, a lot of website creators, etc., etc. So these are really, you know, pivotal moments in time. And we are now on the edge of such a revolution. We're on the edge of an AI revolution. I'm not saying anything that you don't know, but I will give you some data that we see on our platform that I think is super interesting and also what we are doing with that. So when you look at the innovation, the waves of innovation over time, what's actually happening? They are becoming more dramatic, and the intervals between those innovations are becoming shorter. So what used to take decades, maybe, for uh, innovation and technology to be adopted now can take years and, and months. And we see that, obviously, with AI. When you think about all of these revol uh, revol uh, revolutions I mentioned, there's a couple of those like three interesting phases to consider. The first phase is the technology revolution. 
So, you know, innovation comes. If it's a breakthrough uh, innovation, it really creates disruption. So in the industrial revolution, it was steam engines or engines in general. And then later on .com, it was the internet. Now it's generative AI. And the second phase is the economic phase, or the impact it has on the economy, the impact it has on the labor market. It really transforms transform the market. It takes out some of the jobs, it brings no one, and that's a natural part of the economy. And the third phase that's super interesting raises big questions. Questions about social justice and, que and ethical questions. So think about it in the you know, industrial revolution. It was about machines taking the labor work, right? A lot of it sounds familiar today. And then in the internet, in the dot-com revolution, it was a lot about privacy. It still is. And in AI, it's about autonomy and deep fake. So these are big questions we need to answer as a society. Super interesting to think with AI what's happening to the global workforce. So look at the black line. This is job openings. You can see it fluctuates. It goes up and down. It depends on external factors like, you know, COVID, it went down, then with AI or macro situation. But one thing is super interesting. When you look at the pink bars, this is the freelancer economy. So over the years, very const consistently, there's more and more freelancers. And it is predicted that by 2030, 40%, listen good, 40% of Americans will be freelancers. This is mind-blowing, I think. And we are right at the forefront of this economy. Fiverr is a global marketplace connecting freelancers with businesses worldwide. Our mission is to change the way the world works. We want to make sure that we empower businesses to get online services as easy as ordering shoes on Amazon, okay? So we are getting there and we're making a lot of progress. We have 14 years of transactional data, which really gives us like a microscope of what's going on in this economy. And we have over 4 million active buyers, over 700 categories, you know, things from social media to AI to architecture and website building. So I want to talk to you a bit about this data and what we are seeing. So since the launch of AI in the beginning of last year, we saw suddenly there was a big surge on the searches. Businesses were starting to explore what they can do with AI. It started with, you know, AI artists and things like that. But what happened later was super interesting. In April, the amount of searches for ChatGPT on our platform, it already exceeded Facebook and, and, and things like product design, which have always been like super high for us. So it's really interesting to look at what businesses were searching and the case studies were becoming more and more uh, concrete with specific use cases. And what we did, what, what we did then we decided we'll go with the campaign. We went all across US TV with the following campaign, talking about humanity and AI and how it works together. Let's watch it. <sighs> Fine. Humans are noisy. They thrive on chaos. They like to make things. It gives them meaning. They do it over and over and over again until they shut down. Humans are fueled by inspiration. Inspiration and something called tacos. Change makes them nervous, but embracing it? 
changes everything. Yeah, imagine that. So after we went with this campaign live, we, we continued to see more and more interest, more and more demand for specific use cases of AI. And it's super interesting to see how businesses are looking in all different sectors and all different categories for freelancers that combine the human element and AI. So if you look at this graph, this shows you the, kind, the, num the amount of discussions that there are on our platform between businesses and freelancers talking ab about AI outputs. So sometimes a business will bring the AI output they created and will use it as a draft or a storyboard or a vision. Sometimes it will be, you know, I created this and I want to take it to something completely different. It could be graphics, it could be website building, it could be hundreds of different use cases. And I think obviously it's clear that AI is disrupting the market, but it is also starting to elevate the standards. So that's interesting. And again, it's just the beginning. When I look at my marketing team, it could be in design, or SEO, or PPC, content, you name it. I'm starting to see the level of the standard is going up. So both the quality and the speed. Things are, coming, are becoming faster and faster. The teams are more productive. And again, it's just the beginning. I, I was thinking of a way, of a way I can explain to you guys you know, how you can think in your business or whatever you do, how you can think of, about AI. So look at this graph, uh, look at this metrics. Let's start from the vertical um, line. So that's the impact of AI on your business, okay? Or on you. All the way to the bottom, that's minimal. So let's say an extreme example, your restaurant owner, you, you have a restaurant, then AI has very minimal impact on your business. All the way to the top, let's take an example, you're a graphic uh, design agency or you do translation or something like, a, like this. So obviously it can impact you positively or negatively, but it definitely impacts you. And then the other line, that's, that's about you. That's the internal stuff. That's how much desire and how much you are really committed to adopting AI. So all the way to the left, somebody that does not, that's a resistor, what we call a resistor. They do not want to hear about new technology. They do not want to adopt AI in any means. And all the way to the right, those are like the completely, I don't know, AI geeks or people that are very committed to all the time exploring new technologies. Okay, so every one of the quarters of this metrics since I'm a visual thinker, I'll represent with an animal. The first one, minimal impact on the business, minimal desire to adapt AI. I think that's like a sleeping bear. It's okay, they can stay sleeping and they're in the safe zone for now. Moving to the right, again, minimal impact on the business, but the person really wants to adapt AI. They want to learn, they want to adapt AI. I was thinking of an owl. Like, those time, they can take the time, they can learn, you know, the new skills, the new tools, and they can see how potentially, in the future, they can leverage AI. And then, on the top, on the top, the business is impacted by AI, but you have no desire at all to even check this new technology. Now, this might be too dramatic, but I was thinking on a kangaroo on the road. The truck is coming their way. They can, even they can either jump to a new zone or be badly hit. And then, and this is probably the zone most of us are definitely in marketing or in tech. These are the tigers. Now, my wife and I were talking about this presentation. She said this is too aggressive. 
of an animal, so it's a very kind and gentle tiger, okay? I'm saying this for my wife. But what do tigers have? Like, they have two key attributes. One is they are very proactive. They don't wait, right? And the second is adaptability. And I'll double click on each one of these. So what do we see with, uh, what do we see on our platform? What do I see on the different teams when it, it comes to being proactive? Listen, AI is really dangerous because what can happen, it can make all of us really average. If you just bring, if you just write your prompt, whatever tool it is, you use it, then we're all average and it, it's not interesting. You, you will not exceed, you will not excel. So what we need to do is being super proactive. Take the output that you get and just use it as a starting point, okay? And then be proactive in, in trying to experiment with different tools and trying to challenge and definitely bring your creativity, your originality, originality into you know, this environment. So that's the first one. The second is adaptability. Now, I told you I'm many years in marketing, and for years they've been talking about adaptability. But I think in today's economy, in today's tech like revolution, it's so much more important to be adaptable, to constantly, you know, to constantly look at what's happening and to be ahead of the curve, to constantly challenge yourself, to be curious and to be adaptable. Now, we were having a marketing, a marketing hackathon. I don't know if you know what this is, but it's something I love. Basically, the whole team gets together, and everybody thinks about one challenge. And we had one challenge. In many focus groups that we, are do we were doing with uh, freelancers and businesses, there was a real insight about fear. People were fearing that AI will take their job. And this marketing hackathon was like, okay, guys, we have 48 hours. What kind of campaign can we create with this insight? Again, I can't take any credit for this, but this is what the team came up with. So basically, we went live a couple of weeks after uh, in Times Square and billboards all across the US with this campaign of AI, AI took my job to the next level. And I want to end by telling you about Justin. This is Justin. We, we were having yesterday a beautiful dinner, the community of Fiverr with the freelancers, and I was sitting next to Justin. We were talking about different things, you know, German beer, football, whatever, but Justin said he feels like he has an unfair advantage because of the way he's leveraging AI. And I thought that's so brilliant. So I think, you know, all of us here are in super exciting times when you think about tech, about marketing, but it's just a starting point. We are all at the same starting point, and there's a real opportunity for all of you guys that AI will take your job to the next level. Thank you.